Two. Our big story at 5.30, breaking news out of Boone County, where police are now on the scene of a manhunt for what they're calling a serial burglar. Derek Thomas is south of Whitestown Live with more. Hello, Derek. Reporting live, Rafael Sanchez, 6 News. Thanks, Rafael. The new $65 million Avon High School is finished. However, there is a small but crucial problem. The architect says the sewer pipes are too small. Elin Bartnick explains. The architectural firm... In Avon, Galen Bartnick, 6 News. Fanning Howie Associates will meet with Avon school officials to resolve that problem tomorrow. Listen to this. It currently displays pictures as part of the Millennium Photo Collection. Plans to improve a section of roadway in Hamilton County have come to a screeching halt. Find out why this busy intersection in Westfield will have to wait for improvements. And I'm Dion Willis. Imagine if a doctor could tell if you're at risk for heart disease simply by reading the palm of your hand. In today's health, hands down, an interesting medical discovery, and Stacia Matthews is here to explain for us. Ken and Martha, this test nope, pain, no pain. <laughs> a setback for people living in Clay Township. Hear why plans for a proposed fire station are now on hold. That's next in Neighborhood News. In neighborhood news, plans are now on hold for a new fire station in Clay Township. That's because the township is waiting for help from the city of Carmel. Clay Township hopes to break ground next spring. People living in Westfield will not see improvements along a section of 151st Street until at least next year. Apparently the bids for the work were too high. Westfield had originally planned on a new stoplight and raised medians at 151st east of US 31. Town officials say they'll take bids again next year where there might be more bidders. Well, it looks like the road is ending in Westport. It's got to end sometime, doesn't it? Yeah. Too bad, though. These guys have done a great job. Good evening, folks. And you Reds fans, I know you're concerned about your Cincinnati ball club and that NL Central race. They lose to the Braves today in Atlanta 5-2, so they're now two back of the Strohs in the NLC. Works to do there. Thanks, Ed. Will it be a good night for a ball game at Victory Field? We had some rain earlier today, Bob. Yes, indeed, and we still have some patchy showers, chance being less than the past couple of days. Highs in the upper 70s to about 80. Then we dry out and warm up over the weekend, probably mid 80s over the weekend. Last blast of August. <laughs> That's Bob. right. Thank you, Bob. The nation's largest ATM network wants to make sure you see green. Green and not red when the new year rolls around. We'll explain next in Consumer News. Chrysler blamed the accident on winter weather. Martha, some reassuring words today for the millions of Americans who use automated teller machines. The nation's leading ATM networks say they are ready for the year 2000. They say they've spent about $100 million on upgrades and contingency plans to avoid the dreaded Y2K bug. There's concern that some computers will have trouble reading 00, but the networks say ATM cards will work, and they're urging worried consumers to resist draining their bank accounts in December. Speaking of money, some counterfeit stuff is found in an Eastside High School. That's one of the stories Kevin and Dion have for you, new at six. Well, that's right, barely into the new school year. And Good evening, it's 11 o'clock, and Bonnie Marshall says it's a miracle that her granddaughter is alive tonight. 19-month-old Emily Marshall wandered away from her home and into dangerous territory, some nearby railroad tracks. This all unfolded in Lafayette earlier today, and that's where we find News 8's Ken Owen live with more. Ken? Good evening, Mike. Emily is in fair condition tonight at St. Elizabeth Medical Center, but quite a story today. Emily's mother was planting flowers this afternoon. She thought the little girl was in the house playing with her older brother. She was not. One look at the train's engineer says it all. He had just witnessed a close call involving a toddler that wandered onto these tracks. It appears that uh, it's just one of those situations where the mother uh, thought she knew where the baby was, and uh, it got away from her before she realized it. Um, she was out looking for the baby at the time all of this was happening. Even at night, you can see how closely these railroad tracks run to adjoining properties. Take a look over here. 10 or 15 feet off the tracks, a yard with a chaise lounge. As the sound and fury of a locomotive moved toward her, the 19-month-old was in the middle of the tracks. The engineer saw the child and began stopping the train. The conductor, the man in the maroon hat here, actually went to the front of the engine, leaned down, and with his foot, pushed the child out of harm's way. I jumped off the engine run back to her, and she was, she was crying and, and uh, moving around, so I, I thought, well, she must be in pretty good shape anyway, and which really relieved me. 
Everyone is calling Robert Moore a hero tonight. The rescuers who were on the scene from the fire department in Lafayette and Emily Marshall's family, they say they want to meet Mr. Moore. Emily, again, in fair condition tonight. She's expected to be fine when this is all over. Her grandmother says she's bruised and she lost a few teeth, but it's remarkable, says the grandmother, that Emily is going to be just fine. Mike and Debbie. She is a miracle little girl in Lafayette tonight. All righty, Ken Owen reporting live. Thanks. Four baseball fans lived a dream today. They won a contest that allowed them to take four swings before today's Indians game at Victory Field. Now, if they hit a home run, they would get $50,000. Ken Owen was there and even took a few swings himself. From this perspective, it seems possible a 320-foot poke that would net $50,000. Four men from around the state warmed up all the while dreaming of sending these fresh baseballs into the seats. I'm just going to go out there and get a good pitch and hit it hard and hope it, hope it goes far. I've been practicing for three weeks now, getting ready for this, and it's, I'm ready for it to be over one way or the other. Well, I'm just trying to make contact, okay? I just I don't want to go up there and whip four times. That's, that's my main objective right now. To help these guys look as good as they can, Greg Luzinski, one of baseball's most prolific sluggers of the 1970s and 80s, was on hand. Get a good pitch, keep your head down, and try to get through it. Well, let's see how that advice works for a real novice. It's been about two years since I retired from the Wish TV softball team. And as you can tell today, I've worn my special spikes so I can really dig in. In front of my creator and Indians fans, I chopped the first offering, then made a little better contact on the second. Nice job, Dan. It left at least one observer frustrated. Yeah, I did. I put money on him. I put money on him. Can he let me down? It'll be the last interview I do with him. <laughs> When the real competitors started swinging, there were a lot of pop-ups, but no homers. I feel embarrassed. You had a better night, didn't I? I worked out all day yesterday out here. But uh... Michael Poor got the best distance. A 320-foot drive to left center was good for 320 bucks. Put a lot of work into this and uh, do what I did. It's, I'm actually pretty embarrassed about it, to be honest with you. It's wonderful I actually get down on this field, and it's fun. I'm glad I got the opportunity to do it, really. The real show came when Luzinski picked up a bat. He hit two tape measure shots that had the fans scattering for cover. From Victory Field, Ken Owen, Wish TV, News Inc. Breaking Six News. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Six News this morning. The time now is 6 o'clock. A peaceful Wednesday in Gotham City. Look at downtown Indianapolis, looking very calm. As Suddenly a phone did. rang at Batman's house. <laughs> That's Albert right. the butler picked it up. <laughs> Is it time to go put on your cape now? <laughs> That's right. And sometimes I do a little Superman thing, uh, kind of uh, change uh, roles, and that's sort of the forecast for today. I'm Christian Peterson for 6 News this morning. Another story from the east side. We have an update this morning on a shooting from last night. Investigators say it happened during a robbery at the China King restaurant, which is in the 8900 block of East 38th Street near Post Road. Police say a store clerk was shot in the head there, and we've since learned the man died at Wichert Hospital overnight. The victim's name has not been released. The shooting remains under investigation this morning. Things are back to us, fixed in less than two hours. Two teenagers are sentenced in a deadly gun store robbery. That's one of this morning's other big stories. I'm South Bureau reporter. To affect quality of life in the eight neighborhoods. Together with the city, the neighborhoods hope to come up with short-term programs aimed at getting long-term results. And we could get some great long-term results if we got a lot of rain around here. Paul, how does it look for today? A lot of construction, a lot of people out there, but I-65, northbound Morgan and Johnson County. Guys, you're in pretty good shape. That sounds good. Steve, we got two words for you this morning. Filet mignon. Oh, oh. In the house. Oh, yeah. There it is. Oh, that looks That's so good. That's just brutal. How does that look for Metro traffic? It smells it, great here. It looks a lot better up from here than it does there. <laughs> We'll see you in about 10 minutes. It may be gone by then, but we'll be back. The Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra is tuning up for its gala opening night, and we'll give you a taste of the event that's coming up in our next half hour. But first, summer vacation is officially over today for some more area students. We'll tell you who's heading back to class today next. And it does feel like back-to-school weather. It's 10 minutes after 6 o'clock. Some people on the east side of Indianapolis are moving forward with excitement this morning now that an area bar has closed down. Last night, neighbors gathered at a special ceremony celebrating the closing of Ralph's Bar. Neighbors, churches, and businesses raised enough money to buy the property so it can now be converted into a new youth center for disadvantaged inner-city children. Advocates say families and others will benefit from the bar's closing. Oh, the whole neighborhood, we think. The number one, the men in the shelter, with not having, um, not having a place right next to them that 
uh, is involved in alcohol and, and, and the things that they have a problem with, they won't have to see that and they won't have to perhaps get drawn back into it so easily if it's not right next door. The Good News Ministries mission has operated next door to Ralph's Tavern for 16 years. In neighborhood news, 749. The Colts are getting set for their season and they held an unusual tryout last night. Listen to these varieties of the national anthem. Oh, oh, singer, group, or player will perform the national anthem in an upcoming Colts game. No word yet on who it will be. Hmm. Well, what you give your cat could help nip away a potential bug problem. Thank you, Stephen. Another sign that the world of commerce is changing. Nordstrom, one of the anchor department stores at Circle Center downtown, is getting aggressive on the World Wide Web. Nordstrom says it's creating an internet subsidiary, Nordstrom.com, it will include a new site called NordstromShoes.com. Built as the world's largest shoe store, it with the world, they're saying, it will offer 20 million pairs of footwear, 20 million by the holiday season. Wonder if Imelda Marcos has a web account. Stock markets in Japan and Hong Kong got kicked around a bit overnight. The Nikkei lost 1.3% of its value. The Hang Seng fell by 1.1 percentage points. But it looks like it's going to be a very, very strong opening for U.S. stocks today. The S&P Futures Index is currently up 4.7 basis points. That is 8.2 points above fair value. Grace? In consumer news, at least your cat will be happy. Well, if you like gadgets, this will make you happy. A company in South Korea claims it's made the smallest portable audio system in the world. Barum Technologies has created an MP3 device. It's digital. It's called the Museum. It allows up to four hours of voice recording time. The Museum also allows users to download music directly from the Internet. It will cost around 125 U.S. dollars. These things cost a buck, and they can earn you quite a lot. Lottery tickets. We'll check the winning numbers for you in about two minutes. Also coming up, bad credit can be a barrier between you and a new home. But there are ways you can fix that bad credit. Finding help for first-time home buyers, that's coming up after the break. No barrier to staying informed on this TV station. Tune to 87.7 FM and hear 6 News on the radio. We're enjoying a beautiful Wednesday morning. It's prime time, you might say, on this show. We're going to tell you what this is all about coming up in a moment. It's 621, 61 degrees downtown. Across the state. Unless you're a recent big winner in the lottery, you'll probably need a mortgage if you want to buy your new house. A bad credit record can seem like a huge barrier between you and that new home. Addressing your credit problems is just one of the issues the folks from the Indianapolis Neighborhood Housing Partnership can help you resolve. David James has details on getting some help for those first-time buyers. I think I've wanted a house. Six News. Coming up today at 11 a.m. on Six News Midday, we'll continue our week-long series helping first-time home buyers with the help of the Indianapolis Neighborhood Housing Partnership. Today, the focus shifts from debt to the home buying process. <laughs> Good morning, 626. Weather and traffic together on the sixes. Well, yesterday we had about a three-mile backup all the way through that area. Glad that that is behind us. Thank you, Stephen. Coming up next on 6 News, they're going after the top spot. Game highlights up next. If you're in the house, take a look at this order house, 48-ouncer. We're going to tell you what this is all about. It's a great thing coming up to benefit the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra, 628 on this Wednesday morning. Peekaboo. There's the sun making a bit of an appearance on this uh, rather cloudy morning, but uh, looking rather hopeful on a Wednesday. Yeah, that's a very unusual shot, the way that's set up. Mm -hmm. Did you have, were you out last night when the, uh, oh, I guess it was about 6.30 or 7, uh, mm -hmm. we had a mix of uh, real, real big puffy cumulus clouds and there were some other, uh, it was really neat, oh, pretty sky. Yeah, yeah some pretty sky, yeah. some folks got some rain and some folks didn't get enough. There are some places this morning where it is raining, so the day starts. Details on what's new in the tropics coming up at 6.36. All right, we'll see you then. Okay. It is a parent's worst nightmare, an accident on the city's east side to tell you about this morning. A child who was struck by a car last night has died. Galen Bartnick is live from East 38th Street with more for us. Galen? Well, Ken, two-year-old Devin Williams' car, at this point, they do believe that it was an accident. Reporting live from the east side, Galen Bartnick, 6 News. Ken? Thank you, Galen. Four candidates. Downtown, Martha Weaver, 6 News.
Should have heard the moans in the newsroom yesterday afternoon. Another disappointing loss for the Brownsburg Bulldogs. Everyone was watching. The Indiana team came up short yesterday in the second game of the Little League World Series tournament. Brownsburg played the defending champs from last year, Toms River, New Jersey. The Bulldogs tried twice in the late innings to even the score, but in the end, Brownsburg lost. The final was 3-1. to one. The Bulldogs were hoping a team from Boise, Idaho would win last night. That would have kept their playoff hopes alive, but it did not happen. The Bulldogs are still scheduled to play their third game tonight at 7 o'clock Indiana time, and Brownsburg Junior High is inviting the public to watch Game 3 with them in their gymnasium. We'll have continuing coverage for you today on 6 News. And the team should know that a lot of folks in central Indiana are proud of them, of what they accomplished. And they had a great season. They handled themselves so well to yeah. even defeat. We, we really think the world of them and welcome them home when they get here. You bet. And Paul, I know your colleague, Kevin Gregory, was very disappointed. That's at least halfway there. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Stephen. Could you soon be forced to call your HMO before you dial 911? Hear why one company is demanding the change. It may not be easy to forgive and forget, but it could be good for your health. Details on new research after the break. A live look at traffic on Interstate 65. Blowing rather smoothly on this Wednesday morning. 37 minutes after 6 o'clock, we have 61 degrees at our studios. The time is 6.39. Holding a grudge can be harmful to your health. That's the finding of a new study out this morning. It finds that people who are inclined to forgive others enjoy better mental and physical health than those who hold grudges. Refusal to forgive is most common among people who have high levels of anger, depression, and fear. Researchers say that forgiving oneself can also be good medicine. A new treatment and is still quite a ways from hitting the market. Grace, the advertising man who put together the TV spots for Jesse Ventura's run for governor in Minnesota, says Warren Beatty is serious about the presidency. Bill Hillsman says he and Beatty talked over dinner at the actor's home, and Hillsman says Beatty is very serious about challenging Al Gore and Bill Bradley for the Democratic presidential nomination. Hillsman created a Ventura commercial that showed the former pro wrestler battling evil special interest man. He says if Beatty runs, he would be willing to help him, too will be interesting. Ahead on 6 News, the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra is cooking up some special programs. They literally hung on for dear life. A dramatic rescue in New York City begins our look around America. Flames have charred 1,200 acres of forest. Before calling 911, call your HMO. That's what HMO provider Kaiser Permanente is requiring of its patients. Kaiser is looking to control emergency services used by patients who don't need them. A test of the program in Denver cut ambulance use by 17%. Kaiser will take the program nationwide this fall, and several other insurers are considering similar plans. In Gatlinburg... Outside of that, we're good to go, guys. All right, sounds good. Well, the new season for the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra is just around the corner, but the excitement is already here. You betcha the ISO is tuning up for its gala opening night. Joining us to tell us about that this morning is Public Relations Director Tom Akins and... Carol and Faust of the ISO board. Welcome aboard and tell us what you've got cooking for opening night. Well, we have a feast for the entire sensory organs. And before the concert, we have a wonderful pre-concert reception beforehand. Excellent. And speaking of that food, we have a preview of some of that food and Paul Poti got the oh. lucky job of oh. getting close to it. This is Raymond Lephardt's last full season as music director of the Indianapolis Symphony yes. Orchestra. And it's just an exciting time to ring up the curtain on our 70th year. Talk about a man who's made a great contribution to our oh, city. Yes. He has Raymond indeed, without question. Great. Well, thank you so much for being here, and good luck for a great season. Thank you. Mark thank your you. calendar September 12th. And we'll be right back. The time now is 6.53. Recapping our big stories, a man is dead this morning following a robbery shooting. It happened last night at the China King restaurant in the 8900 block of East 38th Street. Police say a store clerk was shot in the head there. The man died at Wishard Hospital overnight. The victim's name has not been released, and the shooting remains under investigation this morning. A toddler struck by a car. No charges have been filed against the driver. A near tragedy involving a child was averted when a five-year-old boy was rescued from the water. Witnesses say Devin Matthews nearly drowned at the marina apartments on the east side yesterday when he fell off of a boat. Total strangers came to his rescue. A woman witnessed the accident and screamed for help. That's when the strangers stepped in. The two teenage boys dove in to rescue the child, and Devin is doing just fine. A leading designer and architect of schools in the U.S. admits it made a small but crucial mistake 
when it drew up plans for the now completed Avon High School. And we'll have that story for you coming up on 6 News Midday. That's beginning at 11 a.m. Paul Poteet's working on his forecast, and how's it looking for today? Speaking of schools, and uh, 57 below in Peru, going up to 76 today. All right, thank you, Paul. To the roadways, here's Stephen Cox. The accident at 42nd and Post, nothing else to worry about so far as crashes go. All right, Stephen, thank you very much, and thank you for joining us. Hope you have a great day. Good morning, America's Next. One final thanks to Shula Steakhouse and the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra for bringing in some great food today. Yeah. Have a terrific Wednesday. Breakfast is served, guys. Bon appetit. <laughs>